Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, April 8, 2020 edition of the Sands and the Storms and the Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I looked a little bit closer at RDP scanning traffic last week and summarized some of what I found in a post today. And what this is really about is that Shodan reported an increase in exposed RDP servers. Now, they had to reduce the number a bit, turn actually out interestingly, and that may be worth another sort of post that uh, the increase was more due to IPv6 than IPv4. So after they compared apples to apples and stuck with IPv4, they still saw an increase was just not as pronounced as before of exposed RDP servers. And well, I talked about this a little bit uh, last week when Shodan first reported it. It's probably due to administrators now having to work from home, needing to quickly expose systems so they can be remote administered. So what I took a look at is to see whether or not the bad guys are sort of following that trend. And this was a little bit difficult actually. Well, uh, in part because RDP port uh, 3389 is one of the top ports sort of consistently. So it's somewhat saturated already. Uh, but uh, what I saw was that attackers are actually dedicating more resources to scanning for for RDP, typically we have about 2,600 source IPs scanning for port 3389 each day. Well, uh, in March, that number went up to 3,540. So uh, that's quite a significant increase, about sort of 20-30% uh, here that we have an increase. So what this really means is do not expose RDP servers. Attackers are actively looking for them. They will find these RDP servers. The number one attack that typically you'll see against an exposed RDP server is password brute forcing. So so if you have to expose an RDP server, then make absolutely sure that you use unique, hard to guess passwords, even better you know, two-factor authentication, but you need RDP gateway for uh, that or uh, limit access to it in whatever ways you can do. VPN, of course, is ideal, uh, but at least limit it by IP address, whatever you can do to add a little bit more security than just the username and the password. Now, another piece of software that apparently is being exposed more and more now is Atlassian's Jira Service Desk. So you have customer service people working from home. They, of course, need to have access to your ticketing system. Jira would be a popular, popular solution here. And in order to allow these users to access it from home, the interface is just exposed to the world. Again, nothing the software is necessarily sort of designed for out of the box in particular weak passwords are again a problem here now Atlassian has been proactive here and published a blog post with tips in how to secure their software this probably applies very much to any kind of service desk software many of these products are really intended to be more used on internal networks not that that really is that much more secure but by exposing them to the world, you at the very least open yourself up to password brute forcing. And remember, all it takes is one user reusing a password that got compromised on a different site. And Google released its monthly Android security update. And while not explicitly noted in the patch notes, apparently it does fix an older issue with Pixel 4 devices. The problem here was that it was possible to unlock the device using the facial recognition even if the user was asleep. And apparently that was often used by kids and such to get their parents to unlock the device. Well, uh, the newest version, if you apply the security update now has a special setting that will allow the unlock function to only work if your eyes are actually 
open. Doesn't seem to have sort of a blink setting or so that's something else uh, that has sometimes been used to sort of have an alive or awake uh, kind of a feature here, but just whether or not the eyes are open or not. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.